All right then, gang, so hopefully you already know the very basics of programming and you know what a variable is. We use it to store information or data like strings, numbers, arrays, etc. Now, for now, we're going to focus on strings and numbers as well as how to declare variables in Go. So let's start off with a few strings. Now, there's various ways we can declare variables in Go. The first way is to say var and then the name of the variable, which I'm going to call name1, and then we say the type of this variable. So I'm going to say string, and then we set that equal to a string. Now, if I try to set this equal to a number, then I'm going to get an error because a number is not of type string. This is an integer. So this has to be a string now because we're typing it explicitly right here. So strings in Go are double quotes. We cannot use single quotes. Strings are double quotes. So let me say that this value is Mario. Now notice we get an error over here and that's because we're declaring this variable, but it's saying to us, if we hover over this, we've declared it, but we're not using it. And that is an error in Go. So in order to get rid of that error, we can come down here and say FMT dot print line, which we saw in the last lesson, and I'm going to say name one. And as soon as we use that variable, the error goes away. And by the way, if I comment out this line, we also get a similar error up here where we import FMT. And if we hover over that, we can see FMT is imported, but not used. So the minute we use it, that error goes away. All right. So if I save this and open up a terminal, I'm going to run this main.go file again, and we should see name one in the console. Mario, we do. All right, so that's one way to declare a variable. Var, then the variable name, then the type, and then we set it equal to something. The next way is to say var, and we'll call this name two, and then we don't type it straight away. We just set it equal to something. I'm going to set it equal to a string again, Luigi, and what happens is Go will look at this and it will infer the type automatically. So it will say, look, I'm reading this and I can see it's a string. So this and this line are pretty much the same. It's just that here we're explicitly typing it and here Go is automatically inferring the type for us. If we hover over name two, we can see at the top it says var name two is a string. So this does the same thing. And if I tried to change name two to something different like an integer in the future, it wouldn't let me because this is still a string. So we can output this as well, name two. I'm not going to run the program just yet. I want to show you a third way. So var name three, and then I'm going to say string like so. And this time I'm not going to give it a value. All I'm doing is setting up the variable, if you like, for future use. So in the future, we can use name three and it can only ever be a string. But right now it doesn't have a value or at least not a value that I've given to it. So if we output these name three at the end, I'm going to save it and run the program. So we can see Mario and Luigi and the third one over here. You can't see it, but it's just an empty string. That's the default value for a string when we don't give it a value ourselves. All right then, so what if I want to update one of these? Well, I can. I can come down here and say name one is equal to something else. Again, I can't change the type. I can't say 25, that's not a string and we get an error, but I can change it to a different string, for example, peach. And also I could take name three and give that a value for the first time. So I can say name three is equal to Bowser, like so. And then if I print out these things again, let me copy this, paste it down here and run this. We should see the first values and then the second values. So Mario and Luigi, then Peach, Luigi and Bowser. Awesome. So that all works. All right, then. So there is another way that we can initialize a variable. So let me show you this. I'm going to say now without the var keyword name four, and then I say colon equals and then a string, so Yoshi. So this is basically a shorthand for either this or this. So we don't use the var keyword, and instead we use the colon. And we only do this the first time we're initializing or declaring the variable. I wouldn't then update it later on and use colon only the first time. 
all right so this does the same thing go automatically infers this type to be a string and we can see that if we hover over it says var name for is a string so this is just a shorthand version and this is what i'll be using for most of the variables in this tutorial series now one quick word of warning you can't use this outside of a function so later on we'll see variables declared outside of the function somewhere in this file or in other files so i could say up here var and then some name is equal oops to a string right like this now i can't use this shorthand up here outside of a function so if i do this get rid of that and use colon equals then it's not going to let me do this we get an error so just bear that in mind but inside a function pretty much all the time i'll be using this all right so we still get an error because we're not using name for so let's just print it out i'm going to say under here fmt dot print line and it's going to be name for oops if i can spell it save that open up the terminal and run this and we should see also yoshi down here which we do awesome all right so next up let's talk about integers so when we're working with numbers in go we have two different types we have int for integers they're whole numbers and we have floats which are for numbers with decimal points in them so we're going to look at ints first of all then we'll come back to floats so the way we declare these is pretty much the same way as we declare these things up here we can either say var and then we'll say age one is an int that's the type and set that equal to 20. all right so that works we can have var age two and set that equal to 30 and this time again go is going to infer the type if we hover over age two we can see it's an int type we are getting those errors because we're not using these variables yet but they'll go away later and again we can use this kind of shortcut right here so let's say age three without the var keyword and then colon equals 40. all right so all of those three are valid so i'm going to come down here and print out these so fmt dot print line and we're going to output age one age two and age three and in fact what i'm also going to do is just comment out a couple of these print lines and variables so we're not flooding the console so i'm going to save that and open up the terminal run the file again and hopefully now we can see all of those integers so 20 30 and 40. now we can also use variations of this int type to specify the bit size of the integer for example we might want our integer to be 8 bits or 16 bits etc now the larger the number we use for the variable the higher the number of bits you're going to be needing so let's do some examples and we'll talk about it a bit more so i'm going to say down here bits and memory and then what we'll do is create a variable num1 and that is going to be of type int and then we put an 8 next to it and that means 8 bits and i'm going to set that equal to 25. now there will be a specific range of numbers that we can use when we say 8 bits now if i scoot over the documentation and i'll leave this link down below we can see down here type int 16 type int 32 int 64 and int 8 so this is the one we're using right here and you can see that we can have the numbers which range from minus 1 to 8 to 127 so 25 is in that range that we used but if we try to use plus 1 to 8 then it's not going to allow us to do that so let me just scoot this back over here for now if i try to use 1 2 oops 2 on 5 that'll do then we get an error and that's because it's outside of the scope of int 8 we can't have a number this big however if i change this to int 16 that's going to be absolutely fine because again if we look over here int 16 has this much larger range int 32 has a larger range still and int 64 has a huge range all right so that's these different int types let's leave this at 25 and change this back to 8 now underneath i'm going to say var num 2 is equal to minus 128 now this is allowed but if i go to minus 129 then 
it's not going to be allowed. However, I need to declare that this is an int 8 first of all. You can see now we get a squiggly line, but 1 to 8 is absolutely fine. All right then. So let's try another type of int, which is an unsigned int. So I'm going to say var, and this is going to be num3, and I'm going to set that equal to be a u int, which is an unsigned int. And this basically means we can't have a negative number. So I could set that equal to plus 25, for example, and that's fine. But if I try to set this equal to minus 25, I get an error. And again, we can declare the bit size of u ints. So I could say 8 for this. Now, whereas before we could go to 127, but not above, now with u ints, we can go beyond that because we're not including minuses. So all the minuses are now going over to the plus side. So we get those extra numbers available to us. So for example, if I go to u int, which is down here somewhere, then you can see, oops, it doesn't specify the range for u int 8 there. Oh, there it is, 0 to 255. So now I could go all the way up to 255, that's okay. If I go to 256, not going to work. And I have to go up a bit size to uint16. All right. So I hope that all makes sense. So that's integers, the different sizes of integers and unsigned integers as well. Now, most of the time and pretty much all the time for this application we'll be making later on, we're not going to specify the number of bits. And you probably won't need to most of the time unless you need to be really specific about how many bits you want your integer to be. It needs to be a specific size. We're just going to go with int for most of the time. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is a float. And remember, a float is a number which has a decimal point. So something like 21.5 would be a float. So I'm going to say var score 1, and we'll set that to be a float. And now, unlike integers, we have to specify the bit size. And it can be either 32 or 64. So again, the bit size dictates the range of numbers we can use. And the higher amount of bits, the larger the range. So float 32. And it can be plus or minus, so I could do minus 1.5, that's fine. Or I could do just plus and then something like 25.98. We can also do a float 64, so var score 1 or 2 rather this time. And that is going to be a float 64. And it could be some stupidly large number, it really doesn't matter, okay? All right then, so for the most part, we'll be using float 64 because they have a slightly higher precision than float 32s as well. And to be honest, it's not gonna cause much of a memory hit on your computer. So we'll be using float 64 for the most time. And in fact, if you just use this operator right here, whereby it's inferred the type, that will be the default type. So I could say, for example, score three colon equals to, I don't know, 1.5. That's gonna be inferred as a float 64. If I hover over this, we can see var score 3 float 64. So this is the kind of thing we'll be doing in the future. All right. And just to demo that we can't have decimal points on integers, if I change this to 20.5, you can see we get an error there for whole numbers only. All right. OK, then. So if you want to see all the ranges and whatnot, I'm going to leave this link down below the video and you can see all the different ranges for the ints and the floats, etc. right here. But next up, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about this FMT package right here and the different methods we can use on that to print strings to the console.